What's going on, everyone? My name is Burke, Coach Nuga Patrick, bringing you the NPCC Season 3 Draft Analysis. So we recently had our draft, and the way our draft worked in the NPCC is we had 1,200 points to spend on 8 to 11 Mons, and there were 5 tiers, so it's kind of like a combination of the tiering system plus the point system. And it seemed a little bit odd, but it, it worked out where you could easily pick 8 to 11 mons and use up all your points no problem and use them up pretty evenly. So it worked out. I drafted. I only drafted 10 mons. I decided not to draft 11 uh, just because I didn't feel like I needed 11 and I never used to draft with less than 11 so I was like let's try drafting 10 see how that works. And I came out of it. I think my draft went well. There were 16 people drafting. I did get sniped quite often for quite a few things that I wanted to use. And the first thing I, I really wanted, the one thing I, I really, really wanted was Kieran Black. And I was like, I'm going to pick up Kieran Black because I've never used it in lead format. It looks a lot of fun, but it got picked second round. And I was eighth pick. I'm pretty sure I was around, yeah, I was eighth pick. So unfortunately, I didn't get Kieran Black if it was picked tw pick second. So unfortunately, I had to rework all my plans. And one thing I forgot to mention, we get three Z-user mons where they can hold any Z-crystal, but they can't use Omni-boosting and Evasion-boosting uh, Z-moves. So, like, Z-status moves are fine as long as, you know, not like Z-celebrate or Z-conversion. None of that. So anyway, wanted to get Kieran Black, didn't get Kieran Black, very upset about that, but I was like, if I don't want to get it, you know, I can still make a team. And I decided to pick up a really good counter. Uh, to Kieran Black first round and just a really good Mon in Gen 7 because of all the new fairies running around and that is Jirachi. S-K-I-L-L -L, the Jirachi because you gotta put in a lot of thought before you eventually click Iron Head and flinch your opponent. So it's got, it's Jirachi. There's a lot of things on my team you've seen what they do before um, Jirachi is not one of my Z-move users and you're probably thinking, why isn't Jirachi your Z-move user? And it's just because I'm not too familiar with Z-Move users, and when I was talking to people in my front office, they are like, what does Jirachi really get that you need to run a Z-Move on? Does it, 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 I guess, a little bit of coverage make those more powerful, but you don't really use Jirachi as a wall breaker. I mean, I guess you could run Banded, you could run Specs, but more likely than not, it's used for utility, it's used for setup, it's used for... Scarf, you know, like there's a lot of things it can do, but wall breaking is generally not one of those things. And so I don't really need Drachi to have a Z move to wall break. Like, I, I guess I could have, uh, what was it? Z Icy Wind? I think it's Icy. No, it doesn't get Icy Wind. Or Z Ancient Power, you know, something like that. But the, there are three mons that I had in my draft that I, I really wanted to put as Z move users afterwards. So I was like, Drachi is going to take a little bit of a back seat. But anyway, Jirachi does what Jirachi does, 100 across the board. It was a good mod to start off with because it's an easy mod to build around. Easy mod to build a team around. It does so many things for my team. It gives me stealth rocker, pivoting, all that fun stuff, wish passer. So I'm, I'm really happy with Jirachi. I've never used it. I hate going against it just because Ironhead flinching is dumb. And I don't know why it exists, but it does. So I'm going to be the one to flinch my opponents. So Jirachi will be fun. And uh, obvious nickname is obvious because Jirachi is the skill based mon. So that that's Jirachi. I, I don't really have much to explain about it. Gets lots of coverage. I'm not going to go list them. You can look them up yourself. So, anyway, second round, I was thinking what mon do I want to pair up with it? And I was like, you know what's a good tier one that I really want to use that looks a lot of fun? Uh, Buzzwole. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to pick up Buzzwell second round. Maybe it goes, maybe it doesn't. And of course, knowing me, it gets taken before I get to go again. So, you know, like another, like, what was it, like 16 picks go by. And of course, Buzzwell gets taken in the second round right before I get a pick. So I was like, I'll just, I'll just replace with a different tier one fighting type, a uh, different fighting type I've never used before. And that is Terrakion, because I know how, ter how terrible it is to go against Terrakion because it's scary. Rock fighting is very good, uh, you know, very good uh, offensive typing, and it gives me an immediate knockoff switch in because Justified 
is a fantastic deterrent to knock off. Because, yeah, they get rid of my life orb, but then they give me a plus one attack, so I don't even need a life orb. I really like Terrakion. I've gone against it. I don't like going against it. And it's got a lot of options to it. A lot of setup. Uh, Swords Dance, Rock Polish. Even gets Calm Mind if I wanted to run it like that. But I'm probably not going to, because it doesn't really get that many special moves. That is worth running. So, you know, not very much coverage, but this is going to be one of my Z-Move users. And the reason for that is it doesn't get the, the best coverage, but this can be a wall breaker. That's the thing. Base 129 attack, that is wall breaker territory. And having a Z move, like a Z poison jab, a Z, uh, Z X scissor, Z Zen head, but you know, something like that. I set up a sword stand, say like he's got a, my opponent has a, I don't think, no, we don't have megas. But you know, like if there was like a, a Mega Venus all around, even though there, there isn't. You know, I could set up a Sword Zen, on the switch it in, and then go for Z Zen Headbutt, and then probably kill it. So, you know, it's that kind of thinking was Terrakion. It just gives it a little bit more to it, and even like just a Z close combat, you know, I have a... What, all Out Pummeling, I think it's, that's what it's called? And base, what, what, 190 power? So that's really strong of a fighting type hit that something has to take. And it just makes Terrakion, I think, a little bit harder to deal with. Especially teams with opposing fairies, opposing uh, poison types, just because like a fairy, yeah, it might be able to switch into a close combat, but then can it take the Z poison jab afterwards or the Z iron head? Uh, and that's kind of my reasoning for Terrakion as a Z move user. Uh, aside from that, it does what it does. It, it hasn't changed at all in how you use it. Uh, from Gen 6 to Gen 7, you run it with any sort of choice item you want, except for choice specs. You can run Life Orb, you can run Dual Dance, you can run Rock Polish, you can just run Swords Dance. Uh, you could you could actually run uh, a more bulky Trackman, because it actually can take us pretty well. You could also run it uh, with the lead rocker. So this is my second rocker, I, my first two picks. I don't have, obviously, any... Um, has removal yet, but I do pick up some. But I like Terrakion. I think it's a cool mod. See how it works. And its nickname is Buff Richie because, you know, Rich. It, it's almost horse-like, and it's like really, it's really buff horse. So Buff Richie. And coming back, uh, it was like another 14 picks, I want to say. And I, it was third round. I was like, I need to pick up a fairy because fairies go very fast. Good fairies go very fast, and I just, I need, I need a good fairy. And I decided to pick up a tier 2 fairy, one of probably my favorites. I, I like it more than Sylveon, I like it more than Clefable. I just hate Clefable, so I'll, I don't like using it. And obviously, not as good as the Tapus, but still pretty dang good, and that is Florges. So Crazy Daisy the Florges. Crazy Daisy, if you ever play like Paper Mario, it's one of the, the, the flower enemies in Paper Mario, Crazy Daisy, and Florges, flowers. So Florges. Again, a mon that has not changed from Gen 6 to Gen 7, doesn't really get anything new, does what it does, it's got meh coverage, but it's got really nice base 112 special attack, monstrous base 154 special defense, you know, subpar defense with an uh, average-ish HP, but because it's pure fairy typing, it's a really good defensive typing, and I, really, I just like it because I think it's overlooked offensively because it's always run defensively and I I rarely rarely see it run offensively in league format um, maybe I'm just watching the wrong people but it can be run offensively I mean it does have base 112 special attack you can run specs on this thing you can run life orb I mean I have seen scar Florida with HP water and that did actually put in quite a bit of work but anyway uh, I really picked this up because one it gives me more setup in calm mind so I've got two calm mind three calm mind set uppers uh, granted, Terrakion is not the best combine setup. It also has like aromatherapy and wish passing. It's got its own recovery and synthesis. So overall, it, it's just a it's just a nice mod to have. It's a really good it's a really good bulky fairy, and it hits really dang hard. It it, it should support the team pretty well, especially like Jirachi Florges. I really like that having plenty of wish support because some of my walls that I pick up later. Uh, walls. They don't really have recovery, and it's nice to bring that support into the team. These also really help, like, uh, Terrakion, make sure the Terrakion doesn't get, like, burned. I can get rid of that. 
So I like Florges. It's a cool mon. Doesn't get the best coverage, but it doesn't really need the best coverage. Uh, offensive Fairy is also just a really good typing because like, the only things that wallet are steel and steel and poison really, and I guess fire. But at least for the poison types, this thing gets psychic for the the, the poison uh, for the steel types. I don't really get anything. And for the fire types, I don't really get anything because you know it doesn't get like like uh, any sort of strong water move or strong ground move, which is a little bit unfortunate, but. Just think, Florges with Earth Power, that'd be fantastic. But, I like Florges, hopefully it can do some work for me this season. I've used a bunch of different fairies, um, so far the ones I'm using the ISL are very offensive fairies. So it'll be nice to have a defensive fairy again, because the last one I used of that was, uh, let's see, I used Aromatisse, and I was so-so for that, and this is like a much better Aromatisse. So, Florges, cool on. And, going into the fourth round, I... I don't know how many points I've left. I, I spent 180 on Terrakion and Jirachi, and then I spent 140 on Florges. I had a certain number of points left over. I knew how many points I, I wanted to spend next round. And I decided I, want the, I wanted a fast electric type. I think Jolteon had just gone, so I'm like, people are going to start looking at fast electric types because I really like having one on the draft. It just gives me that nice pivoting. I've already got Jirachi for U-turn. It'd be nice to pick up something with Volt Switch. So I decided to go with my fast electric type, and it's one I've never used before. In fact, most of my draft I've never used. There's one thing towards the end that I have used before, but I have never used Heliolisk. So I pick up Heliolisk worse Jolteon the Heliolisk because Jolteon's so much better than Heliolisk. So much better. So much. Uh, but I like Heliolisk. It's got three good abilities. I've only have one listed. I should say I only have one list ability listed on each of the Pokemon, even though. All of them have one, more than one ability. The reason for that, I'm just basically listing the the most likely ability I'm going to be using. And I was like, well, why would you only list that for Heliolisk when it gets Dry Skin, Sand Veil, and Solar Power? It's because it's, it's not likely that I'm going to be using Sand Veil because I don't have Weather Setup, and it's not likely I'm going to be using Solar Power because I don't have Sun Setup, and just Dry Skin can always be active because I'm immune. To, it gives me immunity to water, basically. That, that that's that, that's pretty much it. I'm not, Sand Veil doesn't give me anything outside of Sandstorm, and Solar Power doesn't give me anything outside of Sun, whereas Dry Skin actually gives me something outside of Rain. Crazy diverse move pool, got a lot of options to it, a um, whole lot of coverage, uh, grass coverage, you know, it's got Dark Pulse, it's got Surf, it's got Signal Beam, all that fun stuff. It's not terribly offensive, meaning, you know, it's it's offensive stats, 109 special attack isn't like super fantastic, but 109 speed is really nice. I, I've got a pretty fast team at this point because I've got 100, 108, and 109, and I pick up more speed later on. But I just like Heliolisk. I think it is a nice fast electric type, it gives me a decent set of immunities, uh, especially with it being normal type. And it gets both U-turn and switch. That, that's pretty much why I wanted it. I wanted a fast electric type with decent amount of coverage, and it can be useful for pivoting. It can hit decently hard using life over choice specs, and the fact that it also gets U-turn is I, I like having U-turn as well as volt switch, just because I can't be blocked from pivoting, and that's kind of nice because. You know, I, I don't want to get blocked by ground types, but even then, Heliolisk is not one that really gets too bogged down by ground types because it gets both Grass Knot and Surf, which, if I'm running Life Orb, hits pretty hard. So Heliolisk is a cool mon. I think it brings, uh, you know, my team is relatively not bulky, and I picked up something that was even <laughs> frailer because this thing is just, like, super frail, not taking hits. But that's fine. I, I My team is more offensive than I was originally intending it to be. Uh, less less strong walls, but, you know, it, it's kind of an experimental draft. It looks kind of funky, but I think it's going to work well. So, Heliosk, a little bit, a little bit frail, but it can hit decently hard. It's pretty dang fast, and I like it. Worst jolty on the Heliosk. So, coming around, I start, I, as you can tell, I don't have any has removal and I want to pick up has removal. I don't have any cores. I've steel fairy. I have not started the firewater grass core at all. Uh, so like things on my checklist, I, I need has removal. I need a firewater grass type because fire, well, 
fire and water are really nice types to have. Grass type is a pretty good defensive typing. So I wanted to pick up hazard removal, I'm thinking about a grass type, and what pops in my head is a grass type I really wanted to use, and that is Decidua. So owl pun the Decidueye because I've seen so many fucking owl puns, they're not funny anymore, I'm not using one, I'm just going to name it an owl pun. Owl pun. Alright, Decidueye is my second Z move user. Now why did I pick Decidueye? Because Decidueye gets Z Decidium. And now that might not seem terribly useful, because it's only ghost that it gets, you know, like it gets a really strong ghost. But offensive ghost is a fantastic offensive typing. Most teams don't have a good answer to it because it's only got one immunity, one resistance in dark, uh, in normal and dark, respectively. So if my opponent doesn't really have a, a great dark type and doesn't have a normal type, then offensive ghost gonna do pretty well. Plus, this thing gets a lot of options and. I w really wanted it for the defog, but it gets gives me more pivoting and tons more setup. Like everything on my team, I think even Helios can set up. I think Helios gets like agility. I know it gets agility. I don't think it gets anything like offensive setup, meaning calm mind or nasty plot. It doesn't. But anyway, this gives me more setup. It gives me sword stance, nasty plot, and possibly something else. I'm not entirely certain. It doesn't, but it gives me Swords Dance and Nasty Plot, which, which is pretty dang good. Its offensive stats are nice, 107, 100. It's pretty bulky, 78, 75, 100. It speeds a little middling at 70, but I already had some pretty fast things on my team. Wasn't too worried about that. But what's really nice about this is the ultimate, it's like the ultimate setup passer, because for one, we did ban uh, speed and another stat, so like the normal baton pass clause. So like you can't pass like a sword stance and uh, an agility into something, which is fine. Uh, I you know I don't have anything that can do that, but Decidueye is so good at passing stats because of its signature move Spirit Shackle, which just traps things in permanently, uh, unless they've got U-turn, Volt Switch, or Shed Shell. You know one of the things that allows them to. It's basic. It's basically a Shadow Dag, which is really really nice, uh, and. With Spirit Shackle, I don't have to, you know, it's like, it's not like Infestation or anything where you have to keep using it after a certain number of turns. Once you use Spirit Shackle, it's stuck in here with Decidueye. Then, <laughs> I can go for Nasty Plots, I can go for Swords Dances, and then I can pass that out. Uh, because it does get Pentaton Pass. So, not only that, I mean, just offensively by itself, it gets, you know, the, the, the Sinister Air Raid, which I think is like a base 190, 195 ghost attack, which is the strongest ghost attack in the game. Coming off of a base 107 attack doesn't seem all that fantastic, but really things don't want to take it. And it's just a, it just has really nice coverage options, both physically and specially. It's got very nice support options, as I said, like the, the, the passing of stats, but it also gets light screen, it get, it doesn't get reflect unfortunately, but it gets haze. So it is actually a hazer, which you wouldn't actually, I didn't think it was a hazer when I first picked it up, then I looked, oh, it actually, it's got haze. It's got priority, which I was kind of lacking at this point. The only thing I really had for priority was Terrakion's quick attack, which isn't fantastic. This thing gets sucker punch, that's kind of nice. Doesn't get shadow sneak for what awful, for what a, ever god awful reason. It should. It's a ghost. It is a sneaky ghost. It should know Shadow Sneak. You know, it's a sneaky Archer Ghost. It should know Shadow Sneak. But it doesn't. A whole lot of options. I really like it. I hope it can do well. It, as a wall breaker, it's a little bit shaky being in that 70 base speed tier. But after using things like Tapu Bulu and Nidoqueen, which have similar speed tiers, and using those as wall breakers, I'm more comfortable doing it. Uh, you know, I've been getting more comfortable with these kind of middling speed wall breakers than I have in the past, because like I tried using Mammoth Swine and I hated it, just because it's this middling speed wall breaker and it just didn't work for me. But Decidueye is kind of more up my alley, it's, it's fairly bulky, uh, especially specially. Really good options. I'm looking forward to using it. So I'll pun the Decidueye. Then I decided next round to pick up my fire type and I was looking through and there was a tier 4 fire type and I was kind of surprised it was in tier 4. I don't think it's going to work too well in the format, but at the same time, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's that bad. And I decided to pick up Salazzle. 
Uh, Fire Snack, the Salazzle. It has the ability Corrosion. Its stats are not too bad. It's a really fast fire type, base 117 speed. It's got base 111 special attack, and as you can see, its defenses are absolutely terrible. So this is what I'm saying. Like I didn't pick up the bulkiest of bulky teams, but I think I picked up enough. Uh, Salazzle, really cool mon. It gets corrosion, meaning I can poison poison types and steel types, which is kind of nice. You think like steel types? Why do you want to poison steel types? In case I'm going up against things like Heatran, I can toxic Heatrans, uh, which is really nice. Its move pool not the greatest. Uh, it's kind of the problem. Its move pool is not the greatest. But then again, poison fire types actually a pretty good offensive typing. Nothing really, like nothing to my mind, really strongly resists both poison and fire. Um, like, I guess you could say water grounds, but those things have four times weaknesses where you can tack on like a hidden power grass. It gets some neat tech moves like knock off. It gets taunt, uh, disable, which is a thing that actually works. Um, because I know like sub disable is actually a set that Salazzle runs. It's a pretty good. Uh, pretty good set. It does have setup kinda in flame charge, so I can I can run speed boosting, and then it gets nasty plot, so it can be a wall breaker as well. As well as I, I don't think this is gonna be like the best mon out there because I don't think it's got. It doesn't really have the move pool for it. It's got some interesting tech moves. I don't think it's gonna be the best, but it was tier four. I felt like for tier four, that's kind, it was kind of a steal. Because I don't think it's that bad, but I don't think it's it's not like a a top tier fire type. It's not like Arcanine. It's not like uh, Entei. But it is a fast fire type. It gives me a really nice speed tier. I you know like that base 117 speed. That's really nice. That outspeeds the likes of Starmie, the Laddies, uh, like you know like Terrakion, Cobalion, Virizion. It outspeeds all that. It outspeeds Whimsicott. So it outspeeds these really fast Mons in this kind of niche speed tier. It doesn't have to be, you know, like the base 120s, but there's a lot of mons that uh, we consider to be some of the fastest that this thing actually has speeds and can deal a lot of damage to, like in the case of Starmie. It doesn't really like taking sludge waves, especially if you're a plus two. So, and because it's so fast, that's why sub disable works. Because if I was going against something that, I don't know, uh, ha you know, like a Heatran, and really the only thing you can hit me with is earth power and I can't really hit it back because for some reason I'm, I'm not bringing hidden power ground or toxic you could sub on the earth power and then disable the earth power and now I can't touch you and then maybe you're like some nasty plot or some, some, something like that but that, that's pretty much all the tricks Lazzle has it can run I think pretty much any item you want you know choice scarf, choice specs the, you know uh, life orb, those kind of offensive um, options. I like it. We'll see how it works. I, I've never seen it used, so I can't really say from even secondhand experience how good it is in league format. But I want to try it, so that is Fire Snack the Salazzle. Coming back, I, I picked up another Mon. Um, I don't know how, I, I don't know how uh, much I like it for this team, and the reason I say that is because it kind of feels like a similar role to Salazzle in the fact that it is just kind of another special sweeper, but it, it does a little bit more than that, and that is Zorork. I've always wanted to use Zorork, that's kind of why I picked it up. I wanted a dark type, I, and I just saw Zorork there, and I'm like, that base 105 speed's really nice, that good mixed offense is really nice, and the ability illusion to try to, you know, confuse my foes, pretty nice. Decently wide move pool, lots of setup options, agility, calm mind, nasty plot, it's gotta get nasty plot, nasty plot, yeah. And it does get hone claws, and I, I want to say it gets sword stance, it does get sword stance, I always forget. This thing's got plethora of setup, and it has an actual decent move pool for both. Offensive dark is really nice, uh, offensive knockoff, offensive, you know, it's got more priority in Sucker Punch, which is really nice, I needed some more priority. The two things in Sucker Punch, I do pick up different priority uh, next, so it's not just like I have two Sucker Punch users and that's my priority. Uh, and it gets some neat tech options. Memento is nice to help with, you know, like helping your team set up. It gets taunt, it gets trick. Trick's really nice for uh, crippling walls. 
So it's a it's a cool option. It's not like this is what I'm saying. This thing is frail. 60s across the board. It's not taking hits, but it is very nice offensively. It has a fairly large move pool, and the fact that it can set up, it can hide his different mons, possibly four switches, just because they don't think I'm the mon I am. It's gonna make, especially when I bring this, it's gonna force some mind games because I know what I am. They don't know what I am, and it's kind of like a bluff game the entire time until they find out which one's a roar. So, I like Zoroark. I think it's a cool mod. I've seen it used, and I've seen it used well, and I really wanted to use it myself. So, Zoroark. And the nickname was Flimflammed, because Flimflammed is a way to say confused, because it, you know, tries to confuse the opponent by hiding us at different things. And Flimflammed just sounds fun. So, Flimflammed is Zoroark. But, now, I, it, it came to, I think this is round 8. And I still haven't picked up, my dra picked up my dragon, I still haven't picked up my water type. And the dragon that I wanted was still on the board, I was not expecting it to go anytime soon, because it was a tier 1 dragon, no one picks it, almost no one picks this dragon up unless it's free, and it's, it's still kind of like, eh, I guess I'll take it. And that is actually going to be Dragonite. Uh, Dr. Agonite the Dragonite, I love that nickname, Dr. Agonite. It's fantastic. And as you can see, the only ability listed is multi-scale because inner focus is just absolute garbage of an ability compared to multi-scale, so I will never ever use inner focus. Dragonite is a cool mod. This is my third Z-Move user. And now why is Dragonite my Z-Move user? Because of Z-Fly. That is pretty much the only reason people use Dragonite as a Z-Move user, Salamis as a Z-Move user, Landers T as a Z-Move user, because of Z-Fly. It gives me really, really one-time strong flying stab that is so much better than Power Herb Fly because it's base 180 attack compared to a base 90 attack. I really like it as a Z-Move user, plus it'll give me, if I decide to run special, it gives me at least one accurate, basically, power to Hurricane. I like Dragonite. It's got a lot of options, both physically and specially. It can be defensive doing a, due to a lot of tech options like uh, Thunder Wave, it gets Light Screen, and it it doesn't get Reflect. I keep thinking things get Reflect when they don't. No, it, do, it only gets Light Screen, as well as it gets Tailwind, and that's about it. But, you know, it's got Reliable Recovery. This is another thing that gets Haze. It does get Heal Bell. I always forget about that, too. It gets Heal Bell, and I'm pretty sure this thing doesn't get Wish, because that's, that's Salamence's deal. Salamence gets wished for whatever whatever reason. I guess it's a dreamer. It wishes to fly, and now it finally got it, so it gets wished. Something like that. So this gives me some more hazing and phasing options. You know, hazing, and uh, it gets roar, so that that's kind of cool. It gives me a second defogger, which people kind of sleep on defog Dragonite. Dragonite is very bulky. 91, 95, 100 is very, very solid defenses, backed up by base 134 attack. The 80 speed is kind of, kind of a letdown, but again, it's a solar wall breaker, but it gives me it has some really nice priority in extreme speed. Choice band and extreme speed hits so dang hard from this thing. I really like it. Its move pool is very varied, very wide, both physically and specially. So it's just got a lot of options to it. I really like Dragonite. I've never used it before. I've always wanted to. Just because I think it's a really overlooked dragon. People just kinda of say, eh, it's Dragonite. I'd much rather have Salamence, or I'd much rather have one of the Laddies. And don't get me wrong, I'd rather have those too. I think they're, I think Salamence is better than Dragonite, and I think the Laddies are better than Dragonite in League format, but I would not count out Dragonite. I think it is a horribly, horribly scary setup sweeper, uh, because uh, the fact that it gets multi-scale, it's almost always guaranteed one Dragon Dance. And because of the multi-scale, it also can get one Dragon Dance and a weakness policy out. And then it becomes very hard to deal with. So Dragonite's cool. I really like it. And Dr. Agonite hopefully will uh, do some nice stuff for the team. And then my last two picks, I was like these last three picks, Dragonite, and then my last two, I wasn't worried about them being taken. And even if my last pick was taken, I had backups to it, and it wouldn't have been any problem at all. But what I noticed in my team is I had a speed gap from uh, 100 to 80. Um, 100 being the Jirachi, 80 being the Dragonite, so I decided to pick up something in the middle, and this mod I have used before in League format, and that is Meloetta. 
if you watch my, I think I did a draft analysis for the UAL. I'm like fairly certain. But uh, Meloetta, really cool mon. I think it is so good. I, I feel like it was tier 4, and for a tier 4 mon, that's just crazy. I don't, it was never the best in standard, just because there are better options, but in league format, it's so nice. Base 90 speed is is a good good speed tier. 128s in the specials is fantastic. Its attack and defense is not great, but also 100 base HP. It's very bulky. It has setup options in Calm Mind. It does get power up punch. It's got Relic Song, so you can you know change to a physical attack, and once you get 128 speed. So this thing is just awesome. It's got a lot of uh, a wide move pull. It gets pivoting, more pivoting, because that's what I needed. I needed more pivoting. It gives me trick. This thing can run any item I basically want. I can run specs. I can run life orb. I can run scarf. I can run. Uh, I, I can't really run banded because I would have to use route song to get into the pirouette form. Which would be great if I could start as the pirouette form. Like if I could start as either relic or the the melody form. Uh, I don't remember what form it's called. It's called the uh, something form. Not pirouette. I know is the fighting, and then I, I for some reason aria form. There we go. Aria. I was like, I know it's some form of music. The aria form. If you could choose which form you get to start in, I'd say this would be like a tier two easy because it would be so unpredictable, and having a base 128 speed fighting type is absolutely fantastic to start with. But even still, really cool mod. I really like it. And the fact that it gets so many options, along with some neat tech options like Trick and Thunder Wave, just makes it hard to deal with. Uh, the fact that it runs a really successful combine set makes it very hard to deal with as well. I really like Meloetta. I've used it before, and I've used it to really good success. This team, I'm not entirely certain how it's going to work. It's kind of a... well, it's redundant typing both ways, both Psychic and... both Psychic and Normal, but a bulky Normal type is really nice to have, especially for offensive Ghost types. Around like Gengar, I can deal with Gengar pretty easily with uh, Meloetta, which is really nice. And yeah, Meloetta, cool mod. And then for my last pick, I had 100 points left over. I could pick a tier three up, and I decided to go with the bulky water that I didn't have yet. And the bulky water I decided to go with is Swampert. I've never used Swampert before. I need a ground type. I need a water type. And there's Swampert. And I didn't think I was gonna get picked. Swampert's rarely picked in league format. I just notice not many people use it. But it's a really cool mod, and I really wanted to use it. It has solid, solid bull. 100, 90, 90, very good. 110 attack and 85 special attack. 110 attack, very nice. 85 special attack, also pretty nice. It, yeah, it's slow, base 60. But the fact that it runs, uh, you can run this thing banded even, or just completely defensive. It's pretty, it's fairly versatile in that respect. It can be run offensively or defensively. It has an actually fairly good move pool, both specially and physically. More than likely or not, if you're, if you're any, running any special moves, it's just going to be Scald, because, you know, base 85 versus base 110 attack. And it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of nice moves to it. It's got non sad dragon coverage, which is probably the most important. And it gives me another Stealth Rocker, which I think my only two besides this was uh, Jirachi and Terrakion. So it's nice to have a, a near dedicated, a more dedicated Stealth Rocker, because I don't want to have to saddle Jirachi or Terrakion with rocks if I need to bring rocks. I'm going to try to put it on Swampert. And it's really nice, really nice, really cool mon. Not really too much to say about it. Yeah, you know, if you've seen Swampert on the ladder, seen Swampert in league format, you know what it does. It's it's actually very hard to kill, and the fact that I've got two wish passers uh, to pass wishes into Swampert to help its longevity is really nice. So Swampert, cool mon, real like it, and hopefully it will be pretty good. Oh, and its nickname is Man Ray because it just reminds me of Man Ray from SpongeBob. So that is going to be the team. It is an interesting team I think I drafted. Again, kind of unconventional. Not, not much here that you would say, like, these are just normal drafted mods aside from, like, Jirachi, Florgus, and maybe Dracula. 
because you don't really see uh, well, the six, seven Gen Mons, not much has come out, but you don't really see Melwata very often, nor Swampert, nor Dragonite, and you don't really see Zvork as often as I think it should be. So, the team is Jirachi, Terrakion, Florges, Heliolus, Decidueye, Salazzle, Zvork, Dragonite, Melwata, and Swampert. I think it's going to be an interesting team. There are weaknesses that I see in it. You know, you're just looking at it, you know, I, uh... I don't have a ton for ground types, uh, but then again, I'm not, I don't have too much. I have well, I've got three things weak to uh, three things, four things weak to ground, and only one resistance and one immunity. So you could say that's kind of a not great thing. My defog I only have defoggers as has removal. I don't have any spinners, which again, not fantastic. But there were 16 people drafting. I got sniped quite a bit, and you make do with what you can. I didn't really make any real definitive plans. My only plan really was grab Thunder, uh, grab Kieran Black, and that plan fell apart second round, uh, second pick. So I didn't, I didn't really get to, to put that plan into motion. But you know, it's sixteen person draft. You're never gonna get the perfect draft. So I'm happy with it. Our week one starts. I think this is going up on Sunday or Monday. Either one of those days, the battles will be happening this week, and they go. The team builders go up on Friday, and the battles will go up on Saturday. I want to say, but anyway, I've been rambling for long enough. That's all I got for today. My name is Burke, Coach Nuga Patrats. I'll see you all next time.